Hey everybody, welcome to Crack Pack Tuesday number 156 on The Mandalik. I'm John as always, and it's here. We've got some Core Set 2019 packs. Look at that. It's in focus, because I'm using my cell phone camera. I know some people didn't quite like this angle as much as the DSLR, but it's infinitely easier for me to use the camera, because my DSLR, like most, doesn't autofocus when in video mode, so I have to set the focus and hope because it's way above the table, so I can't really be looking through the viewfinder. Anyways, we're going to be on this view for now. I'll try to figure out a better way for it to work. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyways, we're going to open this pack, and we're going to see what's in it, and we're going to talk about each card as though it was a draft and figure out which card we would take, pack one, pick one, if this was a draft. Now, these are sponsored crack packs. Every single patron at the $5 level and above gets entered to win all of the cards from this pack. And this week, it is Father Corey Stika who has won, so I will uh, get in touch with him on on uh, Patreon, uh, or have him get in touch with me on Patreon, and find out if he wants the rare, or all the cards, or none of the cards, or whatever. If you do want to get on, in on that, you can go to patreon.com slash and sign on up at $5 or above, and you help the channel out. You know, YouTube doesn't make that much money. Anyways, we're going to crack this back open, see what's in it. See what we take, pack one, pick one, if it was a draft. Ooh, that pack just fell apart. Up first, we've got ourselves a Tolarian Scholar. Tolarian Scholar is two and a blue for a creature human wizard at common. It's a two, three, and that's it. There's no wizard tribal in this set. There's no reason to play this if you don't have to, and you're certainly not first picking it. Oh, Nake Ogre is up next. It's two and a red for a creature ogre warrior at common. It's a four, two. No flavor or no uh, rules text either. Slightly better than the Tolarian Scholar. It's much more what red wants to do, which is attack, but... It does trade down. It's better than a 4-2 for 4, but it's still nowhere near a first pick. Up next is Mighty Leap. Mighty Leap is 1 and a white for an instant. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 2, and gains flying until end of turn. I actually like Mighty Leap. It's a totally fine combat trick. If I have a spot for it, it goes in every white deck ever. It's exactly what every version of white wants to do. Even if you put it on a flyer, it's a, you know, slightly crappier giant growth, right? So it's a totally fine combat trick. It's just something that you do take very late in the pack. Up next is Bog Stomper. Bog Stomper is four black black for a creature beast 6-5 with no rules text. I don't like Bog Stomper, whereas I might put Onake Ogre into a red deck, and if I had to, I would put Tolarian Scholar into a blue deck. I feel like Bog Stomper doesn't quite do what black wants to do. It's so expensive for what it is, and any creatures can chump block it. And it does, uh, you know, it, it trades down to a two power and a three power creature. Um, that, you know, that, that probably equals about six mana, and it might actually equal less. It just never really has worked out for me in sealed or draft so far. I'm super not sold on Bog Stomper. I try to play this as little as possible. Up next is Plummet, certainly not a first pick, but an amazing card out of the sideboard. One and a green for an instant, tar destroy target creature with flying. If your opponents are playing dragons, uh, elder dragons, nickel bolas, bone dragons, any scary flyers, this is one of the best cards you can possibly have in your sideboard. That being said, you shouldn't main deck it. Yes, there's a lot of dragons in this set. They're at mythic and rare. You're probably just not gonna play against them, so there's no reason to put this into your main deck. But if you're green, and if you see this in a pack and the rest of the cards aren't really that amazing, grab this card. It's going to help you out in some games, but don't main deck it and don't first pick it. Up next is Boggart Brute, probably the current first pick in this pack. Two and a red for a creature goblin warrior at 3-2, and it's got Menace. This is actually the card that uh, debuted the word Menace uh, way back in Origins, I want to say. Maybe it was M15. Uh, anyways, Boggart Brute's a great creature. It's a 3-2 three, for 3, which is something that red would play. It's nice and aggressive stats, and it's got Menace, which means it's going to actually be pretty hard to block. Uh, this is exactly what red wants. It's not a first pick. This pack should theoretically get better, but it is going to be our first pick for now. Up next is Invoke the Divine. Invoke the Divine is two and a white for an instant at common. Destroy target artifact or enchantment you gain for life. This was uh, very main deckable in Dominaria, and that's because sagas were everywhere and really good auras such as uh, uh, Ansara's wings were around, and uh, even worse, they sometimes went on hexproof turtles. And so Invoke the Divine was main deckable there. Invoke the Divine is not main deckable here. There just aren't that many auras. It is good against Invoke the... Or, uh, sorry, um, uh, Luminous Bonds and Hero-Mancer's Cage. And of course, it's pretty decent against uh, anything that's gone on that stupid green horse that I will rant about for the next several months. But there's just 
not enough that's likely to be played by your opponents for you to main deck this card. Like Plummet, there's going to be matchups where this is fantastic outside of the board coming in in game two or in game three, but it should never be in your main deck. Up next is Pegasus Courser, probably also in the running for first pick right now. Keep in mind with Corsets, your first picks will generally be a little bit weaker if it's not a crazy bomb rare, and that's just how Corsets go. Pegasus Courser is two and a white for a creature Pegasus. It's a 1-3 flyer, and whenever Pegasus Courser attacks, another target attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. This does great work in basically all decks, but it really does shine in green when you start sending big creatures that have no business flying into the air. Also, it's a 1-3. It blocks fairly well. It blocks flyers fairly well, and if it doesn't need to block, it gets in for one because it flies by itself. Pegasus Course is just a good card. I wouldn't feel I wouldn't feel the worst I've ever felt first picking it. Let's let's go with that. Up next is Field Creeper. Field Creeper is two generic mana for an artifact creature scarecrow. It's a 2-1. No rules text. That's it. It's a piker. It's a piker that goes into every single deck. You'll play it when you have a spot, but you'll cut it most other times. Certainly not a first pick. <coughs> Up next is Aviation Pioneer. I believe this is our last common. Yes, this is card number 10. Aviation Pioneer is two and a blue for a creature, human artificer at common. She's a one, two. And when she enters the battlefield, you create a one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. Thopter Mom is a great card. Uh, she, she makes a one, one flyer. And she presents a creature on the ground that can block typically trades, but can at least chump block. This is a fine card. Obviously, in blue-white artifacts, it does pretty well. Arguably, I, I've said this a few times, blue-white should be flyers, and you might have an artifact sub-theme. But she's great in both of those, and she's great in other decks. I'd put her as a potential first pick here as well. Our first on common is Gastbark Twins. Gastbark Twins is five green green for a creature tree folk at uncommon. It's a seven seven with trample, and Gastbark Twins can block an additional creature each combat. This is a really good card. It's a seven seven trample, which means it's going to attack incredibly well and get through a fair bit of damage. And if you need to block, it can block a lot of things in this set combined and not die on its own. So I think it's good. The trick, of course, is that casting cost. This does appear to be a slightly faster format. And so getting to seven isn't something you just casually do. You've got to have some Druids of the Cowl. You've got to have a Draconic Disciple or a Gift of Paradise or something. So I'm not currently on the plan of first picking something so ludicrously expensive if it doesn't end the game the crazy flying dragons end the game because they're flying. This doesn't quite have the evasion. It's got the trample and that's nice, but it'll take a fair bit of time to end the game. So I'm not currently sold on first picking this. Uh, we can keep it in frame. I don't think we're picking the brute or the courser over it. So it can stay in the discussion, but I don't think I'm on it. Up next is Meteor Golem. Meteor Golem is seven generic mana for an artifact creature Golem. It's a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent on opponent controls. 3-3 three, three for seven. Bad. Blow anything up. Good. Um, this is expensive, just like Gaspark Twins. This was okay for me in Sealed, but there still were games where I just never got to seven mana and couldn't remotely cast it. So I, I'm not sold on this in draft where uh, the format's going to be faster. I don't think I'm sold on it either. I think I pick this up once I'm in green ramp. Um, it, it's just not good enough for me to first pick here at a seven mana casting cost. As I said, I want something that ends the game. This doesn't even remotely end the game. This just kills a creature. So I'm out on ever first picking Meteor Golem. Up next is Psychic Symbiont. Psychic Symbiont is four blue-black for a creature Nightmare Horror. It's a 3-3 three, three flyer. When Psychic Symbiont enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card, and you draw a card. This card's amazing. I love this card. I've played this card several times already. 3-3 three, three flyer for six is slightly expensive. It's like one or two mana expensive, but discarding a card and drawing a card is really, really, really good. This obviously pairs up with the discard synergies of uh, uh, Fell Spectre or even Ra Rise from the grave this really helps out and drawing a card is just great as well i love psychic symbiont it's two colors which makes me slightly iffy but i still think i would consider first picking it and our final card for the day is detection tower not the best detection tower is a land at rare you can tap it to add a colorless mana or you can pay a generic mana and tap it and until end of turn your opponents and creatures your opponents control with hexproof can be the targets of spells and abilities you control as though they didn't have hexproof they don't lose hexproof which doesn't matter unless you're in a multiplayer game 
in which case other players can't target those creatures. Only you. So there's some politics at play there. Uh, as I talked about in my set review, this is horrible for limited. There's one always hexproof creature, and that's the Vine Mare, which is... <clears throat> choked myself thinking about it it's horrifying it, it is a mistake of a magic card hexproof needs to go away and color hosing needs to not be, be main deckable I, I, I if i had this in my sideboard for some reason it would be fantastic against that horse sure yes but there, there's no real other reason to play this chromium is conditional they have to have a card in their hand you can still kill it with a plummet and a block um palladium wars only has hexproof until she deals damage once so detection tower just has no place in limited for me i'm never first picking this i'm never I'm never second to last pick picking this, probably. Well, I probably will. Um, but yeah, Detection Tower, not not for limited. Maybe for other formats. And we also got a Stone Quarry. We got, and a Beast. What even is that? It is a Baboon Antelope, I guess. We got a Stone Quarry. I don't think I'm on first picking these lands ever, so they won't be in the discussion. But they're great to have when you need them. So really, we're looking at Psychic Symbian, Aviation Pioneer, and Gastbark Twins. I think Aviation Pioneer is not quite good enough to be in the discussion. And uh, currently, the way my experience in the format has been, I'm going to lean towards the Psychic Symbiont. I could see Gaspark Twins being better just because it's monocolored. But let me know what you'd have taken in the comments down below. Would you have taken the Symbiont, the Gaspark Twins, the Detection Tower? For some reason, let me know. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at The Man Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can find me at Facebook.com slash The Leak, Twitch.tv slash The Leak, and Patreon.com slash The Leak, where if you become a backer at the $5 level or above, you can be entered to win all the cards in this pack, just like Father Cory Stika did. Uh, if you like the content, click that thumbs up button. Click subscribe if you want to see more. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see you all next time.